Hey guys, welcome to Moving On TV and to Interview With Heroes. And today I'm going to be interviewing Daddy Dragon, Graham Moore, alias Graham Moore, aka Graham Moore. Who is Daddy Dragon? Where did he come from? Um, why is he called da Daddy Dragon? And all sorts of stuff like that. So this is the beginning of the interview. The first part will be on YouTube, very tame. The second part will be on BitChute and the third whole of the interview will be on our Patreon. So please join our Patreon to watch the whole interview from start to finish. Thank you so much and welcome to Moving On TV. And let's welcome Graham Moore, Daddy Dragon, onto Moving On TV. So, there we go. See you soon. Welcome to Moving On TV. And today we've got a big interview. We've got an interview with Daddy Dragon, Graham Moore. Um, welcome to Moving On TV. Today we've got an interview with a man who calls himself Daddy Dragon, Graham Moore. He also runs the full English show, which I'm going to ask him about. But I want to know where the name came from, who gave it to him, who is he? I want to dig deep and find out everything I can about Graham Moore and where did he come from? How did he start? And where does all this come from? So you'll be able to watch some of this on YouTube. And then we're going to dive real deep for BitChute and the whole of the interview on Patreon. It should be extra from the BitChute bit. So please join our Patreon, Moving On TV Patreon, in order to get our deeper interviews. Take care and enjoy the interview. Welcome to Interview with Heroes, Graham Moore. Daddy Dragon, how are you today in this very snowy day that we're in here in the UK? Record. There we go. So there we go. So hi, how are you today, Graham? Daddy Dragon, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm very well, thank you. Uh, getting ready not only for this interview, but then obviously going live a little bit later on on my own channel. So yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. And it's called The Full English, is that right? The full English show, and it doesn't refer to a breakfast, it refers no. to the constitution. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> but, <laughs> obviously, yeah. yeah. No, but okay, so to start off with, I just want you to tell our viewers a little bit about yourself, because I don't know a lot about you. You know, I've been watching you over the years, and um, I know that your show is there. But who is Graham Moore? I mean, where were you born? Um, you know, where do you come from and how did you get the name Daddy Dragon? Because I'm really interested in that as well. Right, well, uh, in that case, yeah. I would explain it to you because that is a good question and a number of people ask me that. So the first thing is that I was born uh, in Chelsea in London um, and Fulham. Basically, it was St. Stephen's Hospital in Chelsea. Uh, we was in, uh, at the time, um, Peabody Trust buildings which were built for the poor um, and I lived in there with my family with mum, dad and the rest of the extended family all literally lived in these buildings which are still there uh, except they're being sold off for millions of pounds which isn't what they was built for and um, I come from a family of what's known as uh, tradesmen which were metal spinners a metal spinning is a skill. It's like pottery, um, except it's with metal, right? So if you imagine someone uh, doing a pottery thing um, and then you remove that image and you have a lathe and you have a blank piece of metal, a circle, uh, and it's put on a lathe and it spins really fast and then you, you've got your tools and you spin it over a chuck. Mm -hmm. and. And that basically is what creates the metal spinning. And it is the interaction between me and the metal. And it was, uh, and still is, a skill and a craft all over the world. So that 
traditional trade went back generations, including my granddad. Um, and again, my granddad uh, fought in the First World War, etc. He started off as a communist, uh, and then he realised uh, that communism was really bad, uh, and he changed. He trained all of his sons to be a tradesman and in the craft of metal spinning, um, and they created their own business. So he went from being a communist to that. And one of the reasons he did that, quite frankly, was because uh, when he was up north in Birmingham, I believe it was, he actually uh, helped create a strike. He was like the, the um, trade union steward in a workshop. And they was demanding more money uh, for their wages. And in the end, the factory owner said, OK, I'll give you whatever it was, two and six or whatever the figure was, uh, as an increase in your wages. And then he said, OK, lads, uh, we'll go back to work, right? And as they went to go back into the factory, the factory owner put his hand up and said, not you, to my granddad. And all the men went back to work on their lives and carried on working. Uh, and my granddad was then blacklisted uh, by all, by the master craft uh, at the time. And he couldn't get a job anywhere. And he walked the streets with his tools and two little children in hand uh, and he walked everywhere trying to get a job. In the end, he came to London uh, and he met, uh, went into the uh, a factory and the bloke said to him, can you do the job? Basically, the question to it, he said to the guy, look, I'm blacklisted uh, for working, which I have been as well, right? Um, and the guy who owned the factory said, I don't care about any of that. Can you do the job? And he said, yes, sir, I can. And he said, there's your life, get on with it and keep your nose clean. And from that point on, he continued, but he never had anything uh, to do with communism or anything like that again. And there's more of that story. In fact, there's me dad telling the story. I mean, dad's 90. Um, and my dad ran his own factory for 40 odd years. So uh, that's basically where I come from. And I've worked in a factory, etc. cetera. Um, I educated myself. Um, I don't, uh, I didn't like school. Um, and one of the reasons I didn't, funny enough, was because they was trying to make you think in a certain way. And my brain don't work like that. Um, I'm not interested in being brainwashed. Um, I always look at original sources as much as I possibly can, including the archive, some of them going back hundreds of years. And the basis of it is, um, my dad was brought up to the school um, because the headmaster had something to say about me. Uh, and he went up to the school and the headmaster said, we've got a problem with your son. And my dad said, well, what's that? And he said, well, he wants to be a bricklayer and we want him to be an architect. So my dad said, what's wrong with being a bricklayer? <laughs> but it was the difference between a profession and a trade, right? So that basically w was where we all come from as a family. My father's done uh, really well. Uh, my mum died uh, when I was younger of breast cancer. Um, so there's certain things, obviously, that affect your life in that way. Um, so that's where I come from. Um, Sorry, Graham, what did you want to be? What did I want to be? Yeah. Uh, I've got, do you want, my, from the early age, as early as I can remember, from probably four, three years old, all I ever wanted to do was join the army. Okay. I loved the military. I loved the army. Uh, my bedroom was plastered with tanks, machine guns, and all sorts of stuff. And I absolutely believed in the army and the military and loved it. And I loved that. I was an army cadet. Um, and, you know, that's basically uh, what happened. Okay. But I didn't join the military. The reason I didn't join the military is because at a very early age, um, I had uh, a child. Um, so when I was 16, uh, my first uh, child was born, my daughter. Um, and against the odds of many other people, including my wife's uh, friends, I persuaded her not to, to have an abortion. I believe abortion is murder. And 
Uh, we was then together for 33 years. Uh, the mother and I brought up the kids, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know, that's just my uh, belief. Uh, and, and there's a lot and there's a lot to that. Getting back to the other part of the question is, where did Daddy Dragon, the name, yeah. come from? Where did you get the name from? Who named you? Well, I didn't <laughs> name myself, funny enough. Um, because, right, so the easiest way to explain this is that the original flag of England is a dragon, right? That's the original flag. And um, it's not actually called a dragon, but it, it, everyone looks at it as a dragon, right? So mm -hmm. um, that was the original one that they used to take in the battle with them. That was what defined uh, the English flag and the English nation was that. So because I used that English uh, dragon in uh, most, and you can see it behind me, um, in most of my um, uh, media and, and different bits and pieces on Facebook at the time, etc. cetera. Um, I went somewhere, I think it was Manchester, and there was a number of what we described as dragons up there. And um, I was presented with a gift. And on the gift, it said, to Father Dragon. And then I was sent a book by uh, someone else and it said to Father Dragon. So people then started calling me Daddy Dragon. <laughs> okay. And that's where it come from.